In this presentation, we are going to use all the laws, properties and principles that characterize the electric field to calculate the effects they have in space. In this case, the continuous systems of charge. We have to remember that as continuous systems of charge, we can have different types of charge distributions, a longitudinal distribution as the one shown here with an arbitrarily shaped wire, or a surface distribution, I have to consider then already two dimensions and different surface differentials, which I will have to take into account either by choosing their shape so that the integrals are simple or in volume as an arbitrary representation here. For each of the cases, when analyzing it well, longitudinal distribution determine the charge distribution by means of the longitudinal density from the ANDA, I will be able to calculate the global electric field from integrating for the whole length of my distribution. In the case of the surface distribution, where that distribution is characterized by the sigma parameter, what I will have to do is to extend my integral to the entire charge surface. And in the case of the volume, the charge volume distribution will be characterized by the volumetric charge density and I will have to integrate then, extend it to the entire charged volume that I have in my distribution. We are going to analyze different configurations that can be presented to us and that will help me to establish the guidelines that I have to take into account to solve this type of problems. In a first example, we are going to calculate the electric field created by a rectilinear wire charged with a longitudinal density of charge, lambda, at a point P on its axis. Here we have my body charged with a constant longitudinal charge density of lambda, C, split per meter, and the point that we are going to choose to study is going to be this one here, as you tell me, on the axis of my charge distribution. What do I have to do? Consider that each little piece of the cable is going to contribute at this point with a field differential. Given by whom? Well, given by the constant that I have electrical, the longitudinal charge density, the length differential that I consider, and the position of that length differential at the point of study square it, in the position that is given in this case, which logically by the reference frame we are choosing, will have direction according to the unit vector E. If I want the contribution of the whole field, I will have to integrate, and the expression I get is this one here. We see how the differential of x, I will have to make it go through the entire distribution that I have from the closest point to the point of study which would be at a distance given, let's note, by the values that we are setting for the lengths. It will be the value of C minus the little bit that I have on the positive x-axis, C minus B, up to the greatest distance from the differential of x that I can consider, would be at this point, given by whom? Given by C plus A. If we put these conditions into the integral that I have to solve, from the general each differential of length, we see that it will coincide with the differential of x of my distribution and each distance squared, I can rewrite it, taking into account that x would be the coordinate of this differential of x from c minus x squared. Very well, when performing the integral, what I get as a result is directly already the value, and of course all the contributions will be according to the unit vector. We are going to complicate a little bit more, and we are going to analyze now the study, but not in a point that is on the axis. But in this case, we are going to see that it is going to be a point that is outside the axis of the distribution. Let's read the statement to understand it better. We are going to calculate the electric field created by a rectilinear charge we ray with a charge density lambda, which has a total length twice a parameter b to make it general at a point of its mediatrix. At point p, in this case, here we are. What is going to happen now? We are going to choose all the length differentials. They are going to be also, in this case, contained on the x-axis. Then length differential and x differential, we can match them. And the contributions in this case to the study point are not going to be contained in any of the axes. It is going to be given from what would be the direction of the unit vector u sub r, the distance from the module of the position vector r. Here we have the distance that separates the study point from my distribution. And just as before, I have to take into account the expressions that give me each of the differentials studied and for the total field, integrate. Well, if I analyze, just a point that is on the other side by symmetry of the differential of x first that I was considering. What do I immediately realize? Well, that the field contribution of this new differential of x or length differential of my distribution is going to give me an electric field differential such that its horizontal component is going to be in the same direction as the horizontal component of the previous case but in the opposite direction. So they are going to cancel each other out. Now. The vertical components will be superimposed for the whole distribution, 
So in the end, what I will obtain is that at the point of study, due to the symmetry of my distribution, I will only have a field in the vertical direction, SUV field. Therefore, I will have to take into account that I can directly study these SUV components, each field differential, as the field differential but projected on the SUV axis. Taking into account the angle formed by the vector that marks the position of the differential of x with respect to that point from this angle that we have drawn alpha to cover all my distribution, I will have to go through the angle, I will have to vary it, varying it from the value alpha equal to alpha sub 1, maximum value, to alpha equal to minus alpha sub 1. Applying all these conditions from my integral, a little bit that marks the definition of the field, for the calculation of the field, the component, and that what I will have to do is to project it on the vertical axis. How am I going to project it? From the cosine of the angle, as I have it expressed here, cosine of the angle. Taking into account that the differential of length is going to coincide with the differential of x, and that the distance I can also express it as a function of the angle I have, and of the height to make all the parameters that appear to me that I have to integrate depend directly on the variable of integration. In this case, x, and it happens to be alpha. It turns out that in this way, I can solve in a simple integral way, and the value that I obtain is this one that I have to solve between the limits of study for the total length of my continuous distribution. That would go as twice b, or from x equal to minus b to x equal to b. In this way, I mark the limits from minus alpha sub 1 to alpha sub 1. Summarizing, as a result, what I get is this dependence for the vertical component of the field generated by the whole distribution. Horizontal component, null. As we said before, it will depend, therefore, on lambda. Divided by 2 pi epsilon sub 0, the position of the study point in heights h, and multiplied by the sine of alpha sub 1. What would happen if my cable were infinite? If my wire were infinite, this would be lengthening, and what we would be doing is that alpha would be opening up to a maximum value of alpha sub 1 equal to pi means. Well, if we substitute then the limits of my integration, the result that I get is going to be that the field is going to have a value as well, according to, in this case, at the vertical point of study, unit vector j, and of lambda split 2 pi epsilon sub 0 h. And the final example that we're going to look at is going to be that of a charged loop. I have a spiral distribution and all of it with a charge given by the parameter lambda, unit length charge, a longitudinal distribution as well, because it's a ring. In this case, we are going to calculate the electric field created by a circular loop at a point P on its axis and which is located at a height h with respect to the plane of the loop. In the drawing, we have it very well determined. At this point, with respect to the axis of symmetry of the study, I want to determine the field and we follow a little bit the same methodology that we are already using. We select charge differentials from length differentials that are charged. The charge is constantly distributed over the entire length and each charge differential is at a distance given by this vector r from the point of study, its direction and sense marked by the unit vector u sub r. And we see in this diagram already that what would be the modulus of this vector would be determined by the radius of the loop and by the position. The modulus squared would be r squared plus h squared applying basic trigonometry. Therefore, the field given by this contribution will come from integrating the general expression that we know but if we look at different charge differentials, we know also that the contributions that I am going to have with respect to symmetrical points are going to cancel out and I will be left with only the vertical contribution as we have also seen in the previous example for the continuous longitudinal distribution. Therefore, the contribution in Zia would have to multiply also by the cosine of the angle as I have it here expressed to know what is the value according to the vertical axis only and expressing the length differential and the distance squared by the position vector in components that I can relate, I have at the end that the value that I obtain for the integral is this one here. That is to say, I am able to obtain the total field for the whole ring, given by all this expression that appears here, where I know all the values, the lambda, the radius of the loop, the position of the point of study, and according to unit vector, k. We have taken into account, therefore, the contribution of each of the charge differentials that are appearing to me, as if it were a charge, but I have charge differentials, and I have to take into account the type of distribution that I have from the longitudinal surface or volume distributions. Thank you very much.